Hey, Hockey Town, please welcome to the ice. The stories are endless. Today, the story we've been waiting for, the story that has put Detroit on the map. Yes, sir. Detroit will always be Hockey Town. Inspiring. You got a lot of young kids that love the game and believe in the game. You ready? Why not? Why not? Why not? Now it's my turn to give back to the game that gave me so much. Go for it! Motivating. The show if I didn't shoot for the moon, I wouldn't be here today. Hell of a win, boys. Give yourself a hand. One on one on one. We're lucky that all three of them found their own passion for it. For all families. After this transplant, I think about strapping the pads on, hopping out on the ice, and just taking shots. Hockey is for everyone. We have ages 9 to 50, so it is for everyone, whether you can see or not. All ages. 85 and the goalie. And there are times I've retired, but I've come out of retirement. Today, we celebrate Hockey, Hockey Day in America. Everything we really did started on the outdoor rink. That's kind of where our passion took off and where we really learned to love the game. OK, game one. <laughs> I mean, it's hockey at its finest, just uh, cold air, snowing like this. No rules, no coaches, nothing. All you can do is be creative and have fun. The outdoor rinks just bring back such great memories for me as a mom. Girl. Good job, Jack. <laughs> it was hard to get him off the ice. Boom. We had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of pizzas to get him fed, a lot of hot chocolates on the way home because they were absolutely frozen. I miss those car rides. The outdoor rink will always be one of my fondest memories of the three boys growing up together. Yeah. I think my mom was the one who mainly taught me how to skate. My mom played college hockey and then played at the World Championships for USA, and my dad also played college hockey at Providence and then has worked in hockey ever since. Jim and I met through hockey, and I know we both just love the game. We think it's the greatest game in the world, and we're lucky that all three of them found their own passion for it. Woo! Winners! Growing up with my brothers, we'd get into a lot of fights just because, like, whatever they were doing, I wanted to do. It's been really fun for me watching Jack and Luke grow up. I still remember them when we were, like, five and six and seven, so just to see them now, it's pretty funny. It's crazy how time flies, and it's crazy, like, how things can change. It's really amazing. Welcome to Dallas in the 2018 NHL Draft. Vancouver selects from the University of Michigan, Quinn Hughes. So proud of you, bro. Yeah, thanks, so bro. Proud. When my older brother, Quinn, got drafted, it was just an unbelievable night. To see it firsthand and knowing what's coming in the future for myself, it's, it's really cool. It's looking like Jack could go in the first round. You know, I'm really proud of him, and I know the work he's put in. So he deserves everything that's coming his way, and I'm just uh, happy for him. Luke's young, but my dad thinks he's better than me at the same age, so and he's just got to keep going. <laughs> you want score? Back up and is brought now by Kane and slipped on a cross for Gustafson. Outdoor hockey was always a big part of their lives. This was a fun day for our kids. This was at the Winter Classic at the Big House. And obviously the boys are young and it was freezing cold that day. I think it was about 105,000 people. This is a good one at Jack watching uh, the Boston Bruins. He used to just sit there with his popcorn and he had his little Bruins jacket on and he would sit and he didn't miss a thing. He would have been, what, about one there? Yeah, he was one. He was just, he just studied, he was studying. It makes me sad because it seems so long ago. And it's just, you know, these are all young pictures and it makes you realize that it goes by so fast. Family's everything. They mean so much to me. I wouldn't be here without them and I, I love them all a lot. <laughs> my brothers are definitely my role models. They're such good players, but they're better people. They've been teaching me so much in hockey, but at the end of the day, they're my best friends. A lot of people ask us about the success that the boys are having and have had, and I really attribute it to the same thing for all three of them, and that's their passion for the game, their love for the game. Like any mother, I am so proud of my three boys, but I'm most proud of them as human beings, friends, teammates, great brothers. I'm proud to be their mother. Hey, Charlie. Hen um, Henry Blunt was here from the Rangers. Uh, you're going through a, a 
rough time right now, but hang in there. I just want to wish you all the best. You're 10 times tougher than us, bud. Keep fighting. Charlie, man, I love you. I hope you're doing well. I know it's hard to uh, find, you know, happy thoughts in this time. Keep on fighting just like we've all been telling you, and uh, just like you know, we're all here for you, and we love you. You're an inspiration to all of us. Just keep pushing. You're, I, I love you so much, and the whole team's got your back. My brother Charlie, he's gotten so much support from actual NHL players to everyone at my high school, where he used to play goalie and I'm the goalie now. All their encouragement, it's really helped these past two years. Ever since that day, he saw the doctor for what we all thought was mono. Turns out, it was cancer. It's, it's a shock, but Never at any point then did I did I think like the worst because you just you can't think that way. It's pretty tough. Pretty hard to accept. So once I looked at Charlie and I realized how strong he is, I accepted it and just, you know, took my role as his mom. Take care of him. He kind of broke the news to me, and it was hard to understand. And I hugged him for a bit, and I came inside, and I tried to just, like, ponder the thought of, like, what my future holds and what his future holds. And just, like, just everything was rushing through my head. I had a pretty tough time watching my big brother spend months in and out of the hospital and drop to 100 pounds. But within a year, Charlie was okay. The cancer went into remission. And last fall, he started college. He very excitedly went off to Fairfield U and it was, you know, one of the best days of our lives. He like skipped off. It was great. That period of normalcy, I would say, is probably the best time of my life in the past few years. I was happy, he was happy. You could almost say that being a cancer survivor is sort of like being a goalie. You need to be prepared for anything that comes your way. But even the doctors were stunned by what they saw during a routine exam a month into college. Charlie had a different cancer, an aggressive form of leukemia. Still surreal, shocked. I mean, what are the chances, you know? What are the chances? I stay pretty strong on the outside for Charlie all the time, but. When we received that news, I cried a lot, alone, or with Anthony, but not in front of him. Yeah, Charlie amazes me every time I see him. Mostly always smiling. <laughs> and, uh, still has his sense of humor. <laughs> Whose you know, job is that anyway? You know me. <laughs> you have all these unbelievably smart doctors around you, and that together you're gonna fight the second one just like you fought the first one. Charlie's been in the hospital for the last four months, sometimes unable to move his own legs. After like a million tests, the doctors gave him some pretty scary news. He needed a bone marrow transplant, which basically means taking healthy cells from a donor and putting them into his body. But first, we needed to find a donor with a genetic match. All of Charlie's friends got tested, you know, all of our family, everyone we knew. Everyone wanted to be the donor. My oncologist came in and she said, your brother's your match. And we were like, you know, near tears and it was awesome. And so when she left, Will wasn't here, but both my parents were here. We FaceTimed Will. You are my match. What? <laughs> no. Yeah. Seriously? You're a nine out of 10 match. His face was just, his face was priceless. Dude! That means a 90% match! <laughs> I felt very helpless the first time around because all you could do is be there to support him, but now that I can actually physically help him, it was something that really brought me to life, too. They told him, you know, they could go into his back with giant needles up to 100 times, and he says, go for it, whatever you need to do. All you hope for for your kids when they grow up is that they are close, but that kind of closeness, that's like next level closeness. Yeah. So awesome. Love you, brother. Good luck. Definitely, I could adapt some of his immune system traits. I just hope I don't get his hockey skills, because that'd be a problem. Goalies are like a different breed. 
takes a special person to step in front of, you know, hard rubber coming at your face. And, and I like to be a part of that. I like to be the backbone of the team. Once the transplant happens, I'm going to need some time to recover, which means I might miss the rest of my senior season. So at our last game, they gave me a big send-off. This is like an amazing thing that you're doing. We're going to be thinking about you. We're going to be thinking about Charlie. What do you say, team? Today, we're going to win for Charlie and Will. From the Sono Ice House in Norwalk, Connecticut, it's the Norwalk McMahon Co-op taking on the Fairfield Mustang. I like that he's able to see me play. I think it puts a smile on his face to realize that I'm doing OK. We just wanted to let you guys know that even though we're competitors tonight, we're all family in something like this. When I watch him play, you know, I'm hoping he'll do this, hoping he'll do that. You know, I want him to get every shutout he can. 12.55 remain in the first, and it's one to nothing. Fairfield, he said he wants to pitch a shutout. Hockey taught Charlie so many things from when he was first injured as a peewee. It just made him tough, and hockey made him focus, and I think is really helping him get through all this. On February 4th, we did the transplant. They won't know if it really worked for a few more weeks, but I know this already. It's made me and Charlie closer than ever, and I know he's gonna be on the ice sometime soon. I close my eyes, and. I envision like what I want my life to be like after this transplant. I think about strapping the pads on, hopping out on the ice and just taking shots. I think about it every day. It was my whole life, it is my whole life, and it's all I think about. The neighborhood I grew up in, me and my brothers were the only kids to play hockey, so we had a nice community that played you know, basketball, football, baseball, you name it. But we were you know, the, the rare few that played the game of hockey. When Jason McCrimmon was three years old, his mother enrolled him in a community ice hockey program at their local Detroit rink. First memory was of it being very, very cold and skates hurting and all that type of stuff, but was able to stick with it. He took advantage of the opportunities that hockey offered and earned the chance to play at the college and minor professional levels. But after his competitive playing days were over, Jason returned to his hometown to find the community ice hockey program disbanded. So when they dissolved, I said, Jason, we have to have hockey. Can you come help start a program over here? We have to have hockey in Detroit. I always had a bunch of years. We just want to give a different look at a different sport. So it's, it was amazing for us to be able to come here and be able to fill that void once uh, the other program left. Bring this foot over this foot, bro. I love the fundamentals of learning how to skate. It took a long time, but I did it. Why not? Why not? Why not? Coach Jason teaches me, it's like, it's not just hockey you have to focus. You have to focus on school. Oh. I think it's so important for children to see people who look like them being successful. Uh -uh. My kids, they're honor roll students. They are very well behaved. Hockey has really opened the door for them, meeting new people, traveling. It's just a great experience. In just a few years, they've already seen players excel on competitive junior teams and earn college scholarships. But in this community, they never forget where they came from. Ready for the game today? Jason is a great leader and a great role model to our kids because they can see somebody who actually has played the game. To start here and then come back at a different level and be able to give back to the kids that we have here is just amazing. Right here if you need me. Hi, my name is Noel. I am 11 years old and I am a hockey player. She's resilient in all that she does. And I love the fact that when I came up to her and said, hey, do you want to try out Minnesota Wild Blind Hockey? There was no hesitation in her voice. She was on and ready to go. Good job. Keep going. Hockey is for everyone. We started this program out in October, not knowing what to expect, and we turned out to be the biggest program. And if you look, I mean, it's spreading across the U.S. quickly. But we have ages nine to 50, so it is for everyone, whether you can see or not. All right, hey, keep that stick in front. Put that glove up, bend your knees. All right, you want to turn to your right. Let's try that one more time, huh? There's the middle right there. There you go, that one's right on. If you've never seen blind hockey before, there's really only a couple subtle differences. One, the puck is bigger, slower, makes noise. The net's only three feet, 
high as opposed to the regular regulation hockey net. Your goalies are completely blind, and then the rest of the players are any level from completely blind to some vision. All right, hey, everybody, come on in real quickly. Noel, when she first came, I believe we had two volunteers with her almost just walking across the ice. I said, eventually, you're just going to have to push and glide and fall. That's when you discover who the true hockey players are going to be if they get back up. And she got back up. Good. Each practice we do, you can see them break through that kind of that fear barrier and start taking a couple more chances. Because she's had this opportunity, I think she's going to take more risks as she gets older and think that she can do anything. <laughs> well, talk about the food. The food is very good here. Why? Yeah. Decaf, guys? Anybody for decaf? What is one of the features of Frankie Brimsek? And the Bruins and the Rangers were always in fifth and sixth place. Yeah. yeah. Basically, he's done, but he said he may be able to play, like, available every other Friday or something. Sing us a song, Freddie. No, 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 no. Yeah. Well, you, know the, you don't know the words. Age is just a number. To say that is one thing, but to live it is quite another. It's an ideal that Bill Parsley knows well. He has a lot of energy. He can't just sit around the house. So he's here playing hockey once a week, and he loves it. He loves the guys he plays with, and it's been good for him. Actually, I started, my brother, he used to drag me down so I could play goal, and him and his buddies could you know, play. You go down the pond, and I enjoy sports. And it was something to do during the winter, so it was good. He played in high school and then gave it up for a while while he had his career and raising eight kids and stuff like that and went back to it at, like in his 40s, late 40s. And, you know, it's just great that he still has a passion and something that he can do. At 85, Bill is the senior member and goaltender for the Quincy Bald Eagles, an over 60 hockey team that gives its players more than just a chance to lace up their skates. You come down here, and you got a whole bunch of guys, and some of them are clowns, you know. All right, guys, remember when we go out there, think defense and get me the puck on offense. <laughs> it's fun in the locker room, and you want to be with fun guys. Between Kenny here, who's 70, and myself, we got 155 years, is that the right math? 155 years experience. <laughs> Well, I played pond hockey as a kid, and then when I got out of high school, I stopped playing for, I don't know, 40, 50 years or something like that, and then one of the guys that's a member of this group, he invited me to join this group, so this has been uh, quite a treat. If you made a list of all the things that are wrong with us, yeah, I mean, I've separated my shoulder twice, I got arthritis in both knees, my hands don't work right anymore. But, you know, for that hour you're out on the ice, you don't think about it. You just, it's great. Ever since I grew up as a kid, hockey's been the strong part of my life, and that's what's been keeping me going and getting me up to this age. When Parsley and the Bald Eagles take the ice, it isn't for wins or titles. It's simply for the sheer joy of playing the sport, demonstrating that passion can be timeless and that the love for the game knows no age. We're just proud of him. We're so proud that he, you know, he still can do what he can do. And it's funny, you know, a lot of people are very impressed with what he can do, and we just don't think anything of it because it's just like, that's dad, and that's what he does. Here we go, dad. Here we go. Nice job. And his grandkids are really proud of him. I, I love seeing, like, my kids and the way they talk about him. They're, they're very proud of their papa. The landscape in Arizona is incredible. It's unique. Generally, it's sunny and nice out every day, especially in the winter. Hey, let's go. I grew up right outside Boston. You really can't beat it. All my buddies back home are sending me Snapchats walking through the snow and freezing cold rain to class every day, and I sent them back a picture of my uh, flip-flops and my shorts. Someone asked where I was from, and I told them Arizona, and like, they actually couldn't believe that there was, there was hockey or even ice. Three, three up, three up. I started my career back in, in 1995 playing college hockey here at Arizona State. The state of the program when I came back, it wasn't good. There was no backbone. There was really no pride in the jerseys. 
We had a, a unique circumstance. We did not have an arena from day one. We jumped into Division One hockey in about six months, but we, we had a plan, and so far, you know, that's that's paid off for us. Don't let these guys get in the way. Come on now, here we go. Hey, two, one, two, one, two. I don't think that anybody really expected us to be this great, but once I saw the group we had, I knew that we had something way more special than, than anyone gave us credit for it. 4-2 ASU over Boston College. Rolling towards the empty net, they score! And that's gonna do it. It's a hell of a win, boys. Give yourself a hand. Yeah. You know, we're four games away from possibly getting a bid to the national tournament. Just thinking about it, it's giving me the chills right now. Nobody outside of our program really thought we could do it and thought we'd even have a chance to be in the mix at the end of the season. It's so special, and it's the reason I came here. We want other programs out west to look at our success and say, wow, we got to take a serious look at potentially adding the sport at our university. I think the sky's the limit. Hold for it! This is Shelly Looney, and this is what she does every day. Nice job! She coaches young girls who share her same passion for hockey, a passion that has served as her motivation to succeed in all areas of her life. Here's your coffee. Uh, thanks, Shelly. It's so nice to be in your home and with your puppy, and I'm glad you're here. Let's talk about where it all got started. Oh, geez. What was it like for you, um, you know, the challenges that you faced as a, as a woman playing this sport? You know, back then there was no girls that we knew of that played hockey, and I asked my parents, and they had to ask the coaches, they're like, can a girl play? Because my daughter wants to try it. And they allowed me to come on the ice, and um, they were always very supportive. And how did the boys on the team treat you? <laughs> you know, they were great. Um, I was just one of the teammates. If they gave me a hard time, they would know it, because I would give it right back to them. We know you were a tremendous athlete, but <laughs> talk to me about school and what that was like for you. So school was very challenging for me. I think I was in third or fourth grade when I was uh, told that I had a form of dyslexia. I just knew that it took me twice as long to do my homework than anybody else. And by the time I was done, it was dark. So I never got to go outside and play. The passion for hockey made me excel in school because I didn't want it, something to be taken away from me. Shelly excelled both on and off the ice and was accepted to Northeastern University on a partial scholarship. While in school, she made the U.S. national team and a few years after graduating, was selected to play at the Winter Olympic Games in Nagano. Gold medal game, women's Olympic hockey. 14 prior games played between these two. What did it mean to you to be a part of that first team to make the Olympic debut for women's hockey? Me personally, and I think some other girls on the team, were like, oh, it's just another tournament, you know, like we've never seen or been a part of something so magnificent. Now Mounsey across, fed back in by Sandra White, the shot, score! But as the time went on and, you know, we started winning and then we realized how much of an impact that could be on, you know, the United States. Talk to me and walk me through your goal of the game. Sandra White, I remember it clearly. She got the puck in the top of the blue line and she shot towards me in the, the back door and I happened to swing in a hit. Drops it back to Gretchen Yulian. Fed one in front and a shot score! What did you feel like at that moment? I couldn't believe it, to be honest. I, in the video, and I've seen pictures that I just jumped 10 feet up in the air. That's how I felt. This is no miracle. It's an arrival for women's hockey, and the women of Team USA. Technically, I guess mine is the game. It is definitely the game-winning <laughs> goal. goal. It's not technically. It is the game-winning goal. Yeah. You scored the game-winning goal to win an Olympic gold medal. I mean, I have tears in my eyes just thinking about it. I was very blessed. I mean. I was there at the right time in the right place, but I had 19 other girls around me. It's something that we'll cherish together as a, as a group of young women. It was just special. Ready, set, go! Based on your story and what you've achieved in your life, what's the message that you try to convey to your girls every day? Shoot for the moon, and if you fall short, it's okay. At least you gave it your best. If I didn't shoot for the moon, I wouldn't be here today. Go, come on, get I just believed in myself and uh, was hoping for the best. And you got it. I did. <laughs>